Are you looking for a Linux desktop? My advice to you is don't look beyond Dell XPS. Last time when I received my Dell XPS 13 developer edition, I thought it cannot get any better than that. Well, I was wrong. Dell proved me wrong once again. As you may already know, the Linux is the preferred platform for developers. Just don't take my words for it. Read the Stack Overflow survey results or listen to Microsoft. They have built Linux within Windows so developers can use tools that they need to run on Linux. Today, you can walk into any store, buy any laptop that you like, and it will run Linux on it. However, there's a huge difference between it can run Linux with some extra work, and it is built and optimized for Linux. Look, making Linux work on random hardware is doable. You can run it even on a toaster, but it does take a lot of time and effort, and you have to keep fixing things as new updates arrive. I mean, I haven't burned my fingers so many times. Uh, your sound or printer may stop working, um, and then you will not be able to do a Zoom call, you will miss a meeting or you won't be able to print something that you immediately need it. Uh, I used to have a lot of free time to fix those things, but not anymore. Also, I was not learning anything new. I was solving the same hardware-related problems. Uh, it, it, it was a waste of time, and it was also counterproductive. As a professional, I should use my time towards things that add some value to my product or services that I offer to my customers or the stories that I tell to my viewers and readers. So eventually, I gave up and switched to Dell machines that come pre-installed with Linux on them. I mean, let's accept the fact that Dell is not the only player out there that offers Linux is pre-installed systems. There are many independent vendors out there but while they do offer Linux, they are no match to the performance, reliability, longevity, and polish of Dell or other branded hardware. On top of not so great hardware experience, they also tend to create their own derivatives of Ubuntu just so that they can differentiate themselves from others. That actually makes things worse for Linux on desktop instead of helping it. I mean, a Linux desktop is already suffering from fragmentation and they further create the, the fragmentation. Also, you actually don't get a great Ubuntu or Linux experience. Uh, you don't get a Linux experience similar to Windows experience that you would get on Surface devices or uh, Mac OS experience that you would get on MacBook. What you get is a Frankenstein-like experience. Uh, and that's where Dell shines. At Dell, Burton George created a project called Sputnik to bring high-end Dell machines to Linux users. Uh, these are not stock Windows machines with Linux slapped on them. His team works closely with the Linux community to select hardware that works with Linux. I recall a moment when uh, Linus Torvalds, he bought a Dell machine and the Wi-Fi was not working. And there was another uh, machine that has that Wi-Fi chip that works with Linux. So in the next iteration of uh, developer edition, Dell switched that chip with the one that was working on Linux so that uh, that problem was also fixed. Uh, in addition to solving these hardware-related problem and picking hardware that works with these devices, the team also writes Linux drivers for these machines so users don't have to do any extra work on their own. And they provide all of this work through Ubuntu repositories. And as I mentioned earlier, unlike other hardware vendors that also offer Linux desktop on their machines, Dell doesn't fork Ubuntu to create its, uh, its own derivative. It is the same Ubuntu LTS edition with Dell specific drivers and fixes. Uh, you get the same standard Ubuntu experience, which is optimized for these machines. Dell continues to upgrade its systems. And this year, we saw the latest iteration of XPS Developer Edition, which addresses two of my biggest gripes with these machines. Let's talk about some of the new features of the 2020 model. The display. Uh, the system features an edge-to-edge -edge display where the bezel is almost invisible. The 16 by 9 ratio on the 2019 model was great for watching movies, but it was not good for productivity. You, there was not enough vertical space. To create more room for users, Dell did something incredible. They compromised on the branding and removed its logo from the display to increase it to 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I own many laptops, including the 16-inch MacBook Pro, 
and Surface. And I think that Dell has one of the best displays I have seen on a Windows and Linux machines. Uh, finally, you can enjoy HDR movies and TV shows depending on some extra work you might have to do on Linux to support HDR. This is also the brightest display I have ever seen on a non-Apple machine. It's so bright that you will never be running this machine at 100% brightness, even in the broad daylight, which may have some positive impact on the battery life as well. Uh, my second gripe was case and hinges. Uh, the new system comes with an improved case design. The sides of these machines are now aluminum, which gives it a sturdy and elegant look. One of the biggest changes that were made in, in this model is the barrel of the hinge. In the previous model, I needed two hands to open the lid as the hinges were way too strong. The new hinges make it a smooth one hand operation. That is good if you are on the move and you want to open the laptop quickly with just one hand. Uh, the keyboard has also gone through a makeover and they are now on par with the keyboards that you find on the latest MacBook. Well, not the previous generation, but the latest one and Surface devices. They have also increased the size of the trackpad. Uh, well, talking about trackpads, you will not find good trackpads on Windows machine, well, except for Surface devices. But XPS has one of the best trackpads in the space. It's smooth and it's precise. No more fiddling with the trackpad to reach from point A to B. Uh, now, what about battery life? So in my experience so far, I have been with this device for two weeks. The battery life has been great. And Dell, I have had good experience with Dell's battery life either way. Uh, I usually charge all my device at night. And on this machine, I get a full day of work. Um, I usually don't watch any movies on laptops. I use my iPad Pro for that, but I watched two movies on it and I still had over 60% battery left. Uh, the, the, when you talk about movie experience, the built-in speakers are no match for the four speakers of the iPad Pro and they lack a bit of bass, but they are loud and clear. You will not need external speakers to enjoy videos or music. I'm just kind of setting the bar too high for Dell because they have set a standard so high, but these are good speakers. Uh, the microphones are good. One problem with this device that I have noticed, and I think this is, I think the only problem that is there is that due to COVID-19, most people are working from home and Zoom has kind of become the de facto conferencing platform. For some unknown reason, I don't know, Dell has downgraded the webcam on this device. The image is grainy and not at all ideal for conference call when you can be seen on a huge monitor. Uh, you will need an external webcam if you care about call quality or if you're doing webinar or any other media related activity where you are will be seen on YouTube or any other platform. Luckily, microphones on this device are decent. Uh, the machine comes with uh, three USB-C ports and one micro SD slot. I still don't know why Dell put a micro SD slot in a machine in 2020. All of my audio and video equipment use either an SD card or USB-C. So I wish Dell used that space for another USB-C port that would have made this uh, device more, I mean, those ports, I would have gotten one more extra port, but I'm happy that they have removed support for legacy ports. Please don't support legacy ports in your devices. Uh, so how has been my experience with this machine so far? Because I also own the previous generation machine. So I was able to compare the 2019 version and 2020 version. So of disclosure that I, I do own two Dell machines, but this one was provided by Dell for review purpose. The system comes with a i7 1065G7 processor, uh, 32 GB of RAM and 512 GB of SSD. Interestingly, the 2019 model that I have comes with a i7 10710U chip. That chip has six cores, whereas the 2020 model comes with only four cores. So why is Dell dropping the number of cores in the latest version? Well, it's not Dell's fault. Uh, Intel's chip family and numbering can be very confusing. The fact is that i7-1065G7 has a higher base frequency 
and it is the new 10 nanometer architecture as compared to the 14 nanometer architecture of the previous chip and is lower base frequency. So despite fewer cores, this machine, this chip is a bit faster than the previous generation. I did a lot of tests there and it is still capable of compiling code, heavy browsing, image editing, and video editing. I tried to, I mean, not tried, I installed our Linux on it and installing and compiling packages was not at all a big deal. Yes, the fans will kick in whenever I put the machine under heavy load, either it's compiling the code or conducting a Zoom conference with OBS recording uh, the, the call. But the reason fans kick in is to avoid any thermal throttling, something that we saw in some machines earlier. So yes, you would get some noise, but you won't get any performance hit. The machine will run at the maximum possible frequency. Uh, of course, you cannot play resource intensive games on this machine because this is not a machine that is designed for that kind of workload, but you can still play many casual games on Steam. Now let's talk about the Ubuntu experience. First of all, this is pure GNOME and Ubuntu experience without Dell ruining either of the two. I felt that you would get the same pure Ubuntu and GNOME experience on this machine the way you would get Windows experience on a Surface device or Mac OS experience on a MacBook device. It was a great smooth experience. Everything worked out of the box, whether it was touchpad, whether it was touch screen, whether it was Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, I was I was able to pair my AirPod Pro with that and listen to music. Everything was great. I also tried um, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and Art Linux on it, and everything worked flawlessly. No extra work was needed. Uh, personally, I loved OpenSUSE with KDE Plasma on it. Well, Plasma is uh, one of my favorite uh, dist uh, desktop environments because that makes this machine a great system for uh, for a developer and IT admin. Uh, in conclusion, I think it's a great upgrade to the 2019 model. There are many improvements uh, as compared to the previous generation. Uh, two main gripes that were solved was uh, aspect ratio and the hinges. And this machine is much faster than the previous generation. And also it looks more beautiful. I feel that this machine beats every other system out there in one department or the other, whether it be battery life, display quality, build quality, or out of the box Linux experience. I also tried Windows on it, and it was one of the smoothest Windows 10 experience, I think. And it could be a little bit controversial, but I think that it's safe to say that Dell XPS 13 is to Linux. What MacBook Air is to Mac OS and Surface is to Windows 10. I think it's the best device in its class. And after running Windows on it, I feel that it's not just the best Linux laptop. I think it's the best laptop of 2020. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next review. Bye for now.